Hi and welcome back to our channel, where we recap your favorite games for you. Today we will be recapping Assassin's Creed Unity. Assassin's Creed Unity is an action-adventure video game developed and published by Ubisoft. It was released in November 2014 for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. It is the eighth major installment of the Assassin's Creed franchise, a direct successor to 2013's Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. It also has ties to Assassin's Creed Rogue, which was released for previous-gen consoles on the same day as Unity. As the game begins, we learn about Helix which is a cloud-based software allowing its users to relive memories. In 2014, a Helix user decided to explore the memories of a Templar in the service of Jacques de Molay, the last Grand Master of the Knights Templar. This takes him back to October 1307, in the Temple in Paris, which is being attacked by the forces of King Philip the Fair. As the temple is being invaded by Philip's men, de Molay and his advisor escape. De Molay tells his advisor that the assassins are likely involved in this and asks him to hide the Sword of Eden and the Codex Pater Intellectus so they may not possess them. While finding the artifacts, the advisor encounters an assassin named Thomas de Carnelon. He chases after Thomas which results in a sword fight between them. The assassin uses the Sword of Eden which the advisor makes him drop and then uses to win the fight. He also finds the Codex Pater Intellectus on the assassin's person before taking both of the artifacts to their resting place in the temple. As he leaves the room, he sees that de Molay has been captured. However, before he could try to rescue him, Thomas appears and kills him with his hidden blade. Seven years later, de Molay and his affiliates are being burned at the stake. Before dying, de Molay curses the Pope and King overseeing his execution. With his death, the Templar Order was publicly disbanded. Suddenly, the memory gets interrupted by the transmission of an assassin, who introduces herself as Bishop. She explains to the user that they are being manipulated by Abstergo to sift through memories. She then launches an unsequenced set of memories for the user to experience as an introduction to the assassins and Templars. In 1776, an eight-year-old boy named Arno is visiting the Palace of Versailles along with his father, Charles Dorian. His father asks him to sit in a chair and wait for him to return. He gives him his watch and instructs him not to go exploring, which is exactly what he does when he sees a little girl running away. The girl dares him to steal an apple from a dining table outside the palace building. He steals the apple and runs away to hide from a guard who noticed him stealing it. When the guard gives up his pursuit, he finds the girl who introduces herself to him as Elise de la Serra. Suddenly they hear a commotion and see guards running in urgency. Arno assumes that it is because of the stolen apple so he confesses that he is the thief. But curiously the guards ignore him, so he follows them with Elise. He filters through the crowd to find his father's dead body in the center of it. Charles Dorian had been assassinated. He refuses any consolation from the crowd, and that is when the Templar Grand Master Francois de la Serra takes him under his care. Thirteen years later, we see Arno in a struggle against a man named Victor who claims to have won Arno's father's watch. Arno escapes through a window and in the process drops the watch, which falls into the hands of Victor's brother. Arno chases after him and before long, Victor's brother trips and drops the watch, which Arno grabs. He then tries to run away from Victor and his brother. He reaches the De La Serra estate where he meets Olivier. Soon Victor and his brother catch up to him and they urge Olivier that Arno is a criminal. The Grand Master appears and sends Arno off to the library while he deals with Victor and his brother. Francois scolds Arno for his shenanigans before leaving for business in town. He also tells Arno that Elise is in town, but asks him to stay here and do chores when Arno offers to escort her. Olivier tells Arno to brush the horses, which he does before sending the Grand Master off. As soon as Francois leaves, an exhausted Templar messenger named Perrault approaches. He asks Arno to deliver a letter to Francois urgently. Arno takes the letter and chases after the carriage to the estate's general where he encounters Victor and his brother again and they get into a sword fight which results in Arno not being able to deliver the message. Arno returns to the estate where Olivier informs him of Elisa's party at the palace. Arno slides the letter under de la Serra's office door, steals his clothes and leaves for the party. At the palace, he is not allowed to enter the party because he does not have an invitation, so he decides to sneak in. He finds Elise in the building who makes him chase her similar to how she made him chase her 13 years ago. He finally catches up to her and they share a romantic moment before being interrupted by a guard. Elise tells Arno to leave through the window and deals with the guard. On his way out, 
he sees the Grand Master fall to the ground, dead. Arno notices Charles Gabriel Sivert coming out from behind a wall, but before he could do anything, Charles calls the guards and Arno gets framed for the murder. Arno is arrested by the guards and imprisoned in the Bastille. Arno finds himself in a cell with four other men. After his first night in prison, he sees one of the prisoners holding his father's watch and tries to retrieve it. The prisoner gives Arno a wooden training sword and the two duel over the watch. Arno calls his attention to a wall painted with unusual symbols. The prisoner acknowledges Arno's eagle vision, and after learning his surname, introduces himself as Pierre Belek, revealing that his late father was an assassin before returning the watch and offering to train Arno. Two months later, Belek and Arno are still training, when they notice a great commotion taking place outside. The Bastille is stormed by revolutionaries. Belek and Arno take this opportunity to escape. After a few days, Arno makes his way to the De La Serra estate in search of Elise, who was under the assumption that Arno was responsible for her father's death. Elise hands Arno the letter that he was supposed to deliver to her father. The letter was supposed to warn Francois of betrayal from someone within the Templar Order. After learning about his unwitting role in his stepfather's death, Arno decides to seek out the Assassin Brotherhood. After he finds Belek and meets the Assassin Council, he gets inducted into the Parisian Brotherhood of Assassins. Bishop shows up again and offers the user a chance to join the Assassins. When they accept, she shows them footage of Abstergo's Phoenix Project, explaining that the Templars were searching for sages both in the present and the past to map the precursor genome. Arno had encountered a sage at some point during his lifetime, so Bishop was hoping to have the initiate find the sage's remains before Abstergo, through Arno's memories. Bishop then allows the initiate to proceed. Back in the memory, Arno meets with Belek on a rooftop near the conciergerie for his last exercise before becoming a fully-fledged assassin, where he learns that Sivert would be at Notre Dame the next day. Arno is given the task to find and assassinate Sivert. Arno infiltrates the church and enters the confessional where he impersonates Sivert's accomplice Duchesneau to gain information from Sivert. After getting the necessary information, Arno pushes his arm through the lattice and stabs Sivert in his throat with his hidden blade, killing him. Arno then views Sivert's memories, learning the identity of his accomplice involved in the murder of De La Serra, the Roy de Thunes. Arno informs the Assassin Council of his discovery, where he is given the Phantom Blade and tasked with finding and assassinating the Roy de Thunes. Arno leaves for the Cour de Miracles and investigates a commotion, where he finds a beggar having his foot forcibly amputated by you, the Roy de Thunes lieutenant, Alois La Touche. As he was about to intervene, Donatian Alphonse Francois, Marquis de Sade, advises him against it, suggesting instead that Arno follow La Touche to his master. Arno finds and interrogates him, discovering the hiding place of Roy de Thunes. Arno enters the sewers and starts making his way towards the Roy de Thunes. Arno manages to assassinate his target, and with the Roy de Thunes dead, de Sade takes over his position immediately. He then informs Arno that Francois Thomas Germain had crafted the pin used to kill Francois de la Serra. The council gives Arno the task to investigate the silversmith Germain. Arno infiltrates the workshop and finds Germain, who claims that he was being held against his will for months. Arno escorts Germain outside, who tells him that he made the pin for a man called Cratine Lafreniere. While investigating Lafreniere, Arnos destroys his gunpowder supply and discovers where to find his next target. Arno arrives at the Holy Innocent Cemetery to assassinate Lafreniere, the man he believed to be responsible for Francois de la Serra's death. Arno assassinates Lafreniere and, through his memories, discovers that Lafreniere was planning to attack the Hotel de Beauvais. Arno returns to the council and informs them of Lafreniere's involvement in de la Serra's murder. The council orders him to assassinate Lafreniere to which he informs them that he has already done it, a fact that angers them. Although they initially scold him for that, Arno is allowed to continue his investigation. He reaches the Hotel de Beauvais. By eavesdropping on a Templar meeting, he learns about a planned ambush on Elise. Arno reunites with Elise and rescues her from the Templar ambush. He then instructs her to meet him at the Café Theater. They meet at the Café Theater and Arno convinces her to join forces with the Brotherhood to find her father's killer. Elise is brought before the Assassin Council, though she is unable to land an agreement with them. While Mirabeau convened with the Council, Arno informs her of Germain. Elise informs Arno that Germain was exiled from the Templar Order for his radical views and heretical notions about Jacques de Molay. Investigating Germain's residence, they discover that he is her father's killer. While planning to inform Mirabeau of Germain's true identity, 
Arno and Elise find him murdered. After an investigation, they deduce that the killer is likely an assassin. Arno follows a lead to the Saint Chapelle and discovers Mirabeau's killer to be Belek. He had done this because he believed that there could be no peace achieved between the assassins and the Templars and that purging the Brotherhood to remake it into a stronger organization was a good thing. Belek attempts to convince Arno to join his cause, but Arno refuses, and they are forced into a duel, in which Arno reluctantly kills his former mentor. Arno meets with the assassin council for his next assignment. The council has learned that Mirabeau was in contact with the king, so they send Arno to find the letters he sent before they are made public. Arno infiltrates the Tillery's palace, and while disposing of Mirabeau's correspondence with King Louis, Arno meets artillery officer Napoleon Bonaparte. After escaping the Tillery's with him, Arno gains his assistance in tracking down Captain Frederick Rui. Arno reaches the Grand Chatelet, where Rui and his men are executing prisoners. Arno tracks down and assassinates Rui. Through his memories, he learns of a Templar plot to starve France and incite riots, led by a woman named Marie Levesque. Arno meets Elise at Le Marais and informs her of Levesque's plan. Stealing a set of orders from the captain of a grain barge, he discovers that Levesque would be at the Luxembourg Palace. Arno infiltrates the palace and assassinates Levesque. Through her memories, he learns of a plot to execute King Louis, taken on by Louis Michel Le Pelletier. Arno and Elise escape the area in a hot air balloon. They then share a night of passion. Seeking to find and kill Le Pelletier, Arno and Elise meet with the Marquis de Sade at the Louvre, who informs them that Le Pelletier could be found at the Palais Royal. Arno tracks down and assassinates Le Pelletier. Through his memories, he learns that Germain would be present at King Louis's execution the following morning. At King Louis's execution, Arno meets with Elise near the Place de la Revolution, intending to assassinate Germain. Louis XVI is executed and Arno fails to assassinate Germain since he refuses to let Elise take on the Grand Master's bodyguards alone. This causes her to question his devotion to avenging her father. As a result, she cuts off contact with Arno. As Arno returns to the assassin hideout, he is stopped by two assassins who escort him to the council. Due to Arno defying orders to abandon Germain's investigation and his obsession for revenge, the council expels him from the Brotherhood. Months later, he moved back to the De La Serra estate in Versailles and started drinking. While attempting to find his missing watch, Elise finds him and convinces him to resume their mission. As Alois La Touche hosts executions at the town square, Arno sets out to rid Versailles of his terror over the town. Arno assassinates La Touche and, through his memories, learns that Maximilien de Robespierre, leader of the Reign of Terror, is Germain's final conspirator. Arno and Elise drive back to Paris seeking to find Germain through Robespierre at the Festival of the Supreme Being. They manage to plant incriminating evidence on several people, discrediting Robespierre and turning popular opinion against him. Robespierre gets arrested, but he breaks free of his imprisonment and finds shelter from the last vestiges of his allies in France. Arno and Elise find and interrogate Robespierre, learning that Germain was hiding in the temple. Robespierre is arrested again and sent to be executed. Arno and Elise infiltrate the temple to find Germain. When Arno locates him, Germain uses the Sword of Eden to fire a burst of electricity at him. After a fight at the temple's central tower, Germain flees to the catacombs. Arno enters the catacombs and finds the entrance to the Templar vault. Elise then appears and distracts Germain, allowing Arno to attack. Elise then fights Germain alone, but the sword's power becomes unstable. The sword explodes, killing Elise and mortally wounding Germain. In an act of grief, Arno slowly assassinates Germain by stabbing him in the throat with his hidden blade. In a vision following his death, Germain explains his struggle of being a sage, and his beliefs in de Molay's and Elisa's unfortunate deaths. As Germain finally succumbs to his wounds, Arno carries Elisa's body out from the temple, leaving behind Germain's lifeless body. Sometime later, Arno, as a master assassin, walks through Paris and reflects on his own beliefs about the creed not being a grant of permission to as he would, but a warning that everyone is responsible for their actions and their consequences. In 1808, Arno enters the temple once more, accompanied by Napoleon. There they discover Germain's corpse which had long decayed and buried his skeletal remains in the catacombs of Paris. This left Bishop satisfied, as the bones would be difficult for Abstergo to locate and were likely too degraded for DNA extraction. Bishop praises the initiate for his work and promises to contact them again. The recap ends here. Thanks for watching and if you liked it then please like our video and subscribe to our channel.
Also, please let us know what changes you want to see in the channel in the future as we are willing to improve our content for you guys. We will see you in the next one.